friends. Welcome back to Days with Jordan the Lion. Today, we enter this man's world. Let's go. Whoops. Well, that's what we're gonna check out today. Well, my friends, today our vlog brings us to East LA College. And that building right behind, it was dedicated to a man I've been a big fan of my whole life, but even bigger in probably the last 20 years. Now this museum is now called the Vincent Price Art Museum. And originally it started out as just a gallery on the other side of the campus, and I'm gonna tell you why it's here. Now you see, Vincent Price's interest in the arts started from the time he was a very, very little boy. He was actually purchasing Rembrandts at the earliest ages. I mean, we're talking like eight years old. He was wandering into places that sold art, striking up deals with the owners and paying them off in installments. And like I said, one of the first things he ever got was a Rembrandt. Now, Vincent Price's family was wealthy, but that's not how he was able to collect all this. You see, his family, had a penny candy store. And so Vincent actually grew up in the Great Depression. The Great Depression hit once he was born. And so he always had a fear the rest of his life of running out of money or being poor or being homeless. So he always worked. I mean, there wasn't uh, an acting gig or anything that he really wouldn't take. And um, a lot of that started from those days, being in the Great Depression. Now, his family wasn't really hit by it because like I said, they sold penny candies but they did instill in him to not look down upon the others around him. And in fact, when he graduated high school, they made him an offer. They said, we will either pay for you to join the country club that we belong to, and we'll never give you another penny the rest of your life, or we'll give you the amount of money that it takes to join the country club, and you can do something else with it to benefit yourself. And so he chose option B. He went over to Europe, studied in Europe, honed his craft and became a famous artist, but throughout all those years he studied art history, loved art history, and was collecting it the moment he could afford to start collecting anymore. In 1957, Vincent Price came to East LA College here with his wife Mary, met a lot of the students, and he really felt bad that there wasn't much of a collection for them to look at, and so he started donating parts of his collection in 1957. Started here with, I wanna say, a few hundred pieces and it's grown now to over 9,000 pieces so today we're gonna check out the Vincent Price Art Museum. Now Vincent collected a lot of things he collected paintings and a lot of pottery he had a lot of South American a lot of Mexican pottery and so a lot of that's here now he had a lot of it all over his house and in fact he was an early proponent of collecting art and so he was hired by Sears Roebuck to go around the country and purchase art to which they would um, replicate it and you yourself could go in and buy your own art it's called the Vincent Price collection so Vincent over the years would come here attend graduation ceremonies attend classes he loved to sit in on classes and answer questions he loved to be around young people and students and so when he passed away he wanted the bulk of his art collection to go here and so it's still here so let's go take a look So right when you enter, they have a great drawing of Vincent right here. Now this museum doesn't just house Vincent Price's collection. They have student collections, and one of the things that Vincent was pretty adamant about in his uh, daughter's book is that when he donated his collection, he wanted it to be hands-on. He wanted people to be able to go up and touch it and learn from it. So we're going to head up to the third floor. Oh, that's cool. There's a poster for a uh, Kent Twitchell exhibit and if you ever saw the uh, the vlog I did on the Steve McQueen mural on the side of the house that was Kent Twitchell. Now Vincent's collection is on the third floor so that's where we're headed now his permanent collection. Well here it is this room is pretty much what they have on display now even though the whole building's called the Vincent Price Art Museum. Like I said, he really, he donated his collection for kids to learn from, so he wanted his collection to be a small part of what eventually was brought here, so let's go take a look. These actually 
Most of the items that we're going to see were once in his house. Definitely far beyond his time as far as investing in art. He was doing it before the prices really went through the roof. Now what they're showing right now is the Ancient Americas collection, which like I said were some of his favorite things. Take a look at this. Those little carvings, it says, are from 100 BC to 300 BC. Look at all those. Isn't that neat? That you can own something that old? <laughs> wow. Now this is mostly from the pre-Columbian collection. And why he loved to, uh, to collect this stuff um, his daughter would kind of mention in his book that he loved the practical purposes, like that people would decorate the things that they would use for practical uses. So most of these were all um, used for cooking in some way. Look at that. It's like a little, uh, like a little half a turtle. And most of these, it says the time they were donated, like this was donated in 1958. And this one was actually donated in 1991, so towards the end of his life. When he got sick at the end, he knew pretty much he was done. His wife, Coral Brown, had passed away uh, about two years before, and he fell into a depression and pretty much knew he was, his health just kept failing. Look at that. Look at the detail on there. It's like very tribal. Polychrome on ceramic. That one was from Honduras. 300 to 900 CE. Then this one is from 100. It's very, very light decoration on it. And this one is from Mexico. He donated it in 1991. Look at the detail. Like I said, he loved the practicality of art. He thought it should be enjoyed and used. Then there are some of the bigger urn pieces. Now this monstrous piece is actually an incense burner. It's about life size and uh, it was used for religious practices. It says in here that it would have been kind of a daily life incense burner in Veracruz. And this is all the way from uh, 200 to 600 CE. Wow, look at that. So you'd have probably put the incense up there in the very top. Now these are some of his ceramic sculptures from West Mexico. And it said that uh, many of these are recovered from shaft tombs throughout West Mex Mexico. The shaft tombs were uh, dug into the ground that opens into a low ceiling chamber below. So almost like a catacomb it sounds like. So that's where these would have been found. And that one also 100 BC to 300. It's very interesting to see the different depictions of humanity and the art. If you look, I mean, at a lot of the vlogs from different places I've went, how they, how they depict humans in earlier times is pretty interesting. This one's from Nayarit, West Mexico. And then this one is also from Nayarit, West Mexico. Now check out the ones in the back. These look like they're from Jalisco.
Yeah, 100 BC. Gosh. Man, can you imagine? I don't know what Vincent would have paid for a lot of these. In the book that his daughter wrote, she mentions in some instances what he paid for things, but the value that they eventually took on over time is incredible considering what he paid for it on his journeys. Another world traveler. So check these out. These are Nazca ceramics. And these are all like, um, well, especially this front row, these were all um, double spouted Nazca vessels that they said they used for burial rituals. So if someone passed away, one of the deities would sit and decorate these with um, a different animal or image on each side. They said, and a lot of times it would be depicting like a bat or an otter or um, various things like um, with wings or falcons. And they said that they would, um, it would, uh, they would pour things out of it as like a gesture of, um, you know, fertility or whatever for the uh, the survivors. Interesting. This one's really interesting because if you look at it. There are images that connect going around the side. It kind of almost does an M.C. Escher thing where one image is started inside of another image. And look at this one. Fascinating. And that was Vincent's. Southern coast of Peru is where he got that, it says. Now this one was definitely another gift from Vincent Price. Look at the spout. It's got like that falcon head to it. It's even got hands and arms. And if you look closely, there's a tail on there. And then that bowl was also Vincent's. We'll go behind there and take a look at it in just a second. And that is another vessel from Peru. The one in the middle. There's a drinking cup. Look at the face on that guy. And there you can kind of see the back where the tail is and everything. And the back of the other ceramics and next let's check this out now that figure is another one of those that they would have wrapped in clothing and painted and it would have uh, it would have been put inside of a burial for uh, for the afterlife to accompany someone to the afterlife it says it was made from uh, hollow doll size effigies that were made of dyed wood and strings of woven feathers. Which it looks like the string that would have been on going along the top is now gone. You can see the holes going along there. Like a little face in there. Very, very tight in there. And then check out the pottery. That's Vincent Price's pottery right there. Now these are actually called mochi ceramics and these are from uh, northern Peru. Now look, they have the depiction of someone on each one of them with a spout at the top. They call those stirrup spouts, it says. Person would have been able to easily drink of the vessel's contents, most likely a ceremonial drink or liquid, while holding or transporting it. Wow, look at those. Now here's a couple more of those, uh, spouted vessels a little bit different style though these they almost look like they're made out of stone the ceramic is done in that 
like a darker texture. Now these textiles, these old Chimu textiles were Vincent's also. He loved these. He was, that was one of his passions was collecting the, uh, the woven items from countries. He loved that. Look at the detail and the quality in that. I mean, it's from a thousand, the year 1000, so it's held up pretty good. I mean, considering, look at the color and everything is still there. And then same with this one. Also from Vincent Price's collection, he donated this in 1958. Look, you can see all the little faces in there. Now this one's a little dark, so it's a little harder to see, but this was, uh, they believe this was from Central Mexico in the year 1000, and what they think is that it was originally part of like another statue, like the top of it, and then it was repurposed because now it has like the, uh, the top has been carved out. But they said if you notice on the side, there's like a serpent that faintly is going up along the side with the serpent's eye and everything, and interesting and then this one this one's um, a volcanic rock bear is what they call it part of the uh, Talolic Aztec rain gods made out of carved stone Well, that's pretty much it for the Vincent Price exhibit, the permanent collection anyway. They do have a lot more of his stuff, however, from what I read online, they keep a lot of it downstairs and they are willing to show you, um, but you have to usually uh, get in touch with the, the uh, curator here. Now I've called the curator, I've actually sent multiple emails here, and then I finally got a call back and they said the person you need to talk to is out of town, they'll call you in a week when they get back, and that was about six months ago, so maybe we'll make it back here to see more of the collection, but if not, pretty good time getting to see items that Vincent Price cared about enough to donate to others to learn from, things that were in his house, quite an honor. So before we leave, I came back and I just wanted to stare at this picture for a little bit and just kind of take in some, his collection and what it meant to him. And I started looking around and I said, hey, wouldn't that be cool if uh, one of the items pictured here was actually in here and I could show it to you and we'd go, hey, wow, there it is. Well, that guy right there, he's here. Let's go take a look at him one more time before we leave. I'm pretty sure that this guy right here is that same one. I'm pretty sure. You be the judge. Now as I was leaving, I peeked my head in this other exhibit room and I noticed this. And I said, oh, that's interesting. Look at that. And it says that it actually came from the William Randolph Hearst collection. This is some of his Egyptian stuff. He was able to buy a lot of stuff during a time when they were selling off things and letting it leave the country. So this says that this is from uh, the early 19th dynasty, 1319 BC. Well, there you go. Pretty cool. Pretty cool to see uh, what one trip out here made Vincent Price do with a lot of his collection. Pretty cool. Well, what a great legacy to leave. Like I said, you know, how cool is that that he just came here for a visit one time, was so inspired that he donated part of his collection, eventually donating most of his collection, and what started out as a little gallery has turned into a full-fledged art museum for everyone to enjoy 
not only his stuff, but students that go here, other collections from all over the world. That's leaving a legacy behind. Good job, VP. Well, VP, we'll never get to wander around through the inside of your house and look through your belongings, but it was pretty cool to get to see some of the art that you collected over your Mexican travels and South American travels over your life and some of the things you love the most. Pretty cool. Thanks for donating all that stuff, man. That was great. Well, Lionhearts, I think we're going to call it a night. I wanted to thank Cindy H. and Kelly Cook Leach, and thank you all for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed getting to see some of Vincent Price's legacy. Have a great night, and we'll see you all tomorrow. Goodbye. Just a